It is still Wednesday, my dudes. January the 17th, 2018. Benjamin Franklin Day. Yes, good old Benny Franks was born on this day 312 years ago. Guys getting up there. So we are especially about the Benjamins tonight, baby. So what you wanna do? Wanna be ballers, shot callers, brawlers? Or do you wanna be HQDs? Nah, you're strictly trying to cop those colossal sized Picassos, aren't you? Well, if you win tonight, you'll be stashing three zeros over in Rio de Janeiro because this is HQ, the trivia game show you play on your phone where you answer questions to win real cash. I am your quiz daddy, AKA Q Diddy, AKA Sean Quizzy Combs, Scott Rogowski, coming to you live in living color and stereophonic sound from the greatest city on earth, the city that never sleeps, Pulaski, Virginia. Stay popping, Chris Dow, with all 714,000 plus of you, including Ryan and Ian and Comac, Gus Harvey and PDX, the Druckers out in Long Island, Patrick O'Hara, Alyssa Jaden and Morgan, and a happy birthday to Kelsey Hurley and Nicholas Little. Is this your first time sitting down to our three course meal, spaghetti, fettuccine, and veal? Well, here's the real deal. I'm asking 12 questions, ranging from easy to hard. You have 10 seconds from when I start reading the question to tap your answer. If you get it right, you move on to the next round. If you make it to the end, answering all 12 questions correctly, you win or split our cash prize. And tonight's prize is 2,000 undercover Donnie Brascos, 2,000 Dame Dashes, 2,000 Dollarinos, neighborinos. You can afford like five carrots on your hands with the cuts for that kind of cash. Are you guys ready to quiz with me and get some money, huh? Quiz with me and get some money. Is your phone charged? Your chat is swiped? Is your right hand gripped on the whip for the smooth getaway? Quizzy, hold me down, baby. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Let's get this show on the road. Cumero, numero uno. Which of these is often found on the dinner table? Gravy boat, cruise ship, or fishing vessel? What do you find on the dinner table? Mmm. We're cooking up something fine for you guys tonight. Hopefully you don't have to pour over these answers too long. Sauce boats have been shipping gravies around tables since at least the 1600s. Gravy boat is your answer. And we have 720,538 of you riding the gravy train. The rest are excused from the dinner table. Go to your room. Think about what you did tonight and come back tomorrow. Q2, South Africa is on which continent? South America, Africa, or Central Africa? South Africa, we love you. Our beautiful land, the nation of South Africa is aptly named because you'll find it on the southern tip of the African continent. Africa is your answer. 667,508 of you are globetrotting tonight. The rest of you, slightly incompetent about your continents, although it's better than being incontinent. 667,000 have Q3. The Gospel of Luke is a key book in which holy text? The Jedi Bible, the Quran, or the New Testament? The Gospel of Luke. Testify, testify. Luke, I am your savior. Luke is the third of four canonical gospels that kick off the New Testament, not the Jedi Bible. That was a little, no. 619,284 of you are getting biblical on the quiz tonight. The rest, Sunday school dropouts, apparently. The book of Luke, the gospel of Luke, I believe. The key phrase there is, we have a failure to miscommunicate. What we have here is a failure to miscommunicate. 619,000, moving on to Q4. In wine tasting, what step comes after looking at the wine, swirling it, sniffing it, or tasting it? Yes, do you know your steps, your wine sampling steps? Any sommeliers in the game tonight? Well, we can share the women, we can share the wine. Too bad chugging isn't an option. But as all wine sophisticates know, before you can taste or even smell the wine, you've got to swirl it around, get those aromas going, open it up a little bit. And look at that, we lost over 150,000 of you at the dregs tonight, but a 441,466 are clearly enophiles. 
or winos, depending. Q5, the theme song to The Facts of Life was written by an actor on what other sitcom? Growing Pains, Family Ties, or Full House? Ah, going back to the 90s. The Facts of Life, well, if you ever rocked out to Robin Thicke, and who hasn't, you might know Robin got it from his papa, Alan Thicke who wrote several TV theme songs in addition to acting as Jason Seaver, the beloved sitcom dad, on Growing Pains. Yes, Alan Thick, one thick bear. <laughs> the sitcom Growing Pains is your answer because the facts of life, you see how that works. There's kind of a double layer question. 177,579 of you are thick bears as well. The rest of you experiencing some Growing Pains on tonight's quiz over 200,000, gone, kaput, capiche. Bam, that's it, no mas. Q6, which of these art movements was founded first? Dada, Futurism, or Bauhaus? Which of these art movements came first before the other two? Bauhaus is not where the rapper Bow Wow goes when his girlfriend's mad at him, no, it was a German art movement that began in 1919 at an art school. Dada began around 1914 with the start of World War I. Shout out Marcel Duchamp. But futurism was founded before those two. It's the earliest. Forward-thinking Italian artists founded futurism in 1909. And how about this, folks? Savagery at Q6. 41,756 remain. They're making their own moves tonight but we lost over 120,000 to an art attack, a fatal art attack at Q6, the halfway point. Oh, my Lanta. Q7 for the 41,000 plus. The author of Matilda also wrote the screenplay for a film in what series? James Bond, Planet of the Apes, or the Muppet movies? Did you see Matilda? Hey, little Mara Wilson, shout out Mara Wilson. If you read Matilda, that's the movie I'm talking about, if you read Matilda the book, you know how author Roald Dahl can mix funny and scary. He pulled it off for the big screen with You Only Live Twice, a James Bond film set in Japan. James Bond's your answer, and more savagery at Q7. Oh, boy, Oberto. Wowie zowie. 10,143 of you are secret agents, but the rest left shaken and stirred, shook as the millennial, ja millennial James Bond likes his martini shook. Blofeld makes his first appearance, by the way, and you only live twice. Another fun fact, 10,143 of you, come, come, Mr. Bond, come, come, to Q8. Which of these is not a line of longitude? The oblique meridian, the prime meridian, or the anti-meridian? At the 100th meridian, at the 100th meridian, where the great plains begin. I'm not asking about the 100th meridian, that's a real one too. The prime meridian, also a real one, runs through England and marks zero degrees. And the anti-meridian cuts through the Pacific at 180 degrees. But an oblique meridian is just a fancy math term, not a line of longitude. 5,219 of you know your lines of longitude. Doing lines tonight, the rest of you tore your obliques at Q8. 5,219 have Q9. What Jewish food is also the name of a type of sphere-like sculpture? Kugel, Cholent, or Matzah? Oh, my kind of question. Kugel, Cholent, or Matzah? Well, Kugel is a Jewish delicacy, one of my favorites. You got your potato Kugels, you got your sweet noodle Kugels, little apple Kugel. Mm. It's also German word for ball. The German word for ball is also kugel, so it's an appropriate term for that stone sphere that sits on a film of water, allows it to rotate a full 360 degrees there. 1,578 got it right, but damn, Daniel, we just lost over 3,500. 3,500, you saying, oi vey, oi gewalt, finding nothing but surus here at Q9, but 1,578 shepping so much nachis right now. They got Q10. Which of the following companies does not have a female CEO? Revlon. IBM or Mattel? This is your third to last question. There are less than 2,000 players left in this game. You gotta answer all three to win the money. Mattel is led by Margot Georgiatis, a female human, and IBM CEO is Ginny Rometty, also 
a female human, but Revlon is headed by CEO Fabian T. Garcia, a dude. It's a man, baby. 814 of you are revved up after that one. Yeah. You guys are international quizness machines. The rest of you downsized here at Q10. Go see Carol and HR. Pack up your things. Q11. In the Lord of the Rings trilogy, which volume has the highest word count? The second, the third, or the first? This is the penultimate question here, folks. One quiz to rule them all. The three volumes of the Lord of the Rings trilogy add up to about a half a million words total. A lot of words. But while the Two Towers and the Return of the King are both hefty volumes, the first installment, The Fellowship of the Ring, is the longest by word count. Oh, yes. Oh, my lanta. 215 of you got it right. Another bit of savagery here towards the end of the game. Galadriel is looking upon 215 of you favorably tonight, the rest thrown into the fiery pits of Mordor. There is one final question. One question to rule them all. 215 players left, $2,000. It all boils down to this. Who's gonna get their hands on some grants like Horus? You gotta answer this one, Q12. Which of the following languages is not read from right to left? Urdu. Persian or Sanskrit? Oh yeah, get those tongues flapping. Any polyglots out there? Who knows this one? 215 of you left. Over 200,000 watching, waiting patiently to see what happens. In modern times, several languages are read from right to left, including Arabic, Hebrew, Urdu, and Farsi, which is also known as Persian. But like English, this language is read from the left to the right, so it's the right answer. Turk snaz. No, I'm sorry. Sanskrit is your answer, baby. And we got 91 winners. Hey -oh. Winner, winner, chicken schnitzel dinner. 91 winners, in fact, splitting $2,000. That's good for 21 bucks and 98 cents, nearly $22. Find a couple pennies in your couch and you've got $22 tonight. Congrats to EEE -E -E Obama. Sir, we salute you. Thank you for your service and for playing HQ. Gannon Jew, you won some money. Boomer 123, Boomer Esiason, Nick Bongo, Stan Jast, JG Price, not J.G. Wentworth, trust J.G. Price, and Brandalina, all 90 plus of you also, you also won money, I can't read all your, all your names, I'm sorry, but thank you for playing, congrats to you. If you didn't win again, guess what? You can come back tomorrow, manana, 3 p.m. Eastern time, 9 p.m. Eastern time as well. We're doing two games again tomorrow, day game, night game, day night double headers here at HQ. Did you have fun? Yeah, you did. I sure as heck did. You've been wonderful. I've been Scott Rogowski. Until tomorrow, I'm signing off. Right now, I'm calling a cab and taking the tape of tonight's show straight to the Museum of Broadcasting. Good night! <laughs>